Hello team, let's grab our robe and wizard hats as we delve into the dungeons in Legends of Grimrock 2. Developed and published by Almost Human Games, Grimrock 2 is the aptly named sequel to their charming indie dungeon crawling RPG released in 2012. The story starts off with the king from the last game continuing his fine market business of exporting prisoners, now dumping them on random islands rather than magical towers. After a freak storm shipwrecks the boat transporting your team, one swing of a stick opens up your cage and begins your adventure of figuring out where the heck you wound up. Grimrock 2 certainly earned its rights to be called a sequel. The game has the four classic races from the first game and a new race with the Rattling, a race that offers an alternate take on dexterity builds. As for the classes, alongside the three basic classes we have a whopping five new classes to add much more variety to the game. Classes range from the alchemist that uses guns in combat and cultivates alchemy ingredients, battle mages that can tank and cast magic, and even the humble farmer that gains experience by eating food. The sequel also boasts greater environmental variety, including going outside for a change and even underwater, which plays into the game's structure as well through making puzzles more dynamic and disjointed. It's easy to see how much time and effort went into improving this entry into the Grimrock series. The gameplay for Grimrock 2 is more or less the same from the original, with some improvements added to streamline old mechanics and facilitate new ones. The core of the gameplay centers around free-moving combat with your team of four fugitives in a 2x2 two -two formation, attacking enemies you encounter and solving puzzles along the way. One new mechanic, however, is the ability to actively use your weapon skills through charging an attack rather than relying on dice rolls in the past game. This is especially nice because the ability to pull out a knockback or triple backstab at will really helps with some elements of combat. The game also introduces a new weapon with the flintlock gun, a weapon that packs a hard instant range hit at the cost of unrecoverable ammo and no stat scaling. Damage from enemies now also holds the potential for extremity damage for the player, with things such as lower accuracy from a head wound or the inability to swing your weapon arm due to injuries. Magic also had a slight change by requiring you to draw the spell rather than dialing it in, which actually allows for more spells to be played around with through the rune path. The monster AI has also been changed a fair bit. One big flaw with the original Grimrock was that a certain dodge tactic reduced the enemy AI to a non-issue. However, in Grimrock 2, enemies now have certain means to close the distance easily, and even have different tactics depending on things such as player behavior or being at low health. Finally, Grimrock 2 has bosses! Each area has a boss fight that can easily ruin you if you aren't prepared to fight it, which really adds for an element of threat to the game beyond just regular enemies. The mechanics added to Grimrock 2's gameplay really helped to flesh out some much needed variety in the game. The extra choices for classes and the one new race make playthroughs much more unique, unlike the first game where class structure was somewhat limited. The game also has extra difficulty options such as single heal save points or an Iron Man mode if you want some extra spice in your playthrough. The addition for bosses also helps to break up pacing by offering a fast action-paced climax to a zone in between all the puzzle solving and exploration. Extremity damage is also neat since it can make or break a fight without the player realizing it, or just make them trudge to a heal crystal much more frustrating. Some elements of the gameplay, however, stand out as kinda weak. The gun was probably the most disappointing thing for me compared to the other projectile weapons of the game. Leveling up the gun skill trait merely increases your range to a maximum of 5 tiles and reduces the chance of a gun jam, which sounds okay, but the other projectile weapons have infinite range and don't suffer from random acts of incompetence. The inability to recover ammo makes sense, but it also kinda hamstrings the gun. While you get more gun ammo overall, bad luck can leave your gunner without bullets and being somewhat ham-fisted in combat as a result. On another note, while the enemy AI has improved in many ways, it still feels somewhat goofy, namely with them freaking out whenever a player stands still from a few tiles away. The AI issues are not game-breaking, but they look really bizarre, and it makes it seem like the monsters get stuck in sort of a programming loop rather than, you know, being actually aggressive. Despite the issues I have with some of the new changes, the additions overall add so much to Grimrock 2 and makes it a thrill to enjoy. One separate facet of gameplay I'd like to address, however, is level design. Grimrock 2's major innovation was that adventurers get to go outside and explore the open wilderness alongside the various dungeons in the game. This adds so much to the Grimrock game model is probably by far the best improvement made with this sequel. Being able to just go outside alone makes the game feel much more alive and engrossing than the original Grimrock where you were just stuck in a tower forever. Levels also feel much more organic. Open areas, despite being in a grid-based system, look like actual environments rather than stiff and constrained zones. 
A bunch of caves and dungeons also got this treatment, though some of the late game zones suffer from the first game's bland level design. Grimrock 2 also implements elevation mechanics within zones, and this really opens up the puzzle and exploration aspects of the game. By far my fondest memory of the game is walking up to a river expecting to be stopped by an invisible wall, only to fall into the murky depths and wind up drowning in a panic. Many puzzles take full advantage of this freedom of exploration, with things such as underwater switches, to hidden ledges, and of course the classic spike pit. I even found myself stumped on various puzzles because I kept thinking linearly rather than vertically. One consequence of this, however, is that as a result of the more open nature of the levels, secrets seem to be easier to find and in some regards much more obvious. Finally, the open-ended nature of the game can be both a blessing and a curse, and in my regard it was a wild ride. When the player gets to the main hub they could head in four different directions, and the game expects players to take a certain path despite having all of these options to explore. In my game, I wandered into one of the hardest zones first, yet somehow managed to struggle my way across giant enemy crabs and crusader zombies, barely surviving every encounter by the skin of my teeth. I personally find this to be exhilarating since I adore non-linear exploration and using game design to punish going places you aren't supposed to, but I could see many players getting frustrated by walking into a rattling pirate and getting shot to death as a result. I never would have thought literally opening up the game would open up so much in the Grimrock brand. It really is by far the best thing about this game. The game engine for Grimrock 2 is pretty good, and kind of a beast in some ways. The game takes up 1.2GB of hard drive space and used up roughly 30% of my processing power and 1.2GB of memory as well. So multitasking can probably be hard for weaker computers. To wit, the game for the most part ran at a beautiful 60 frames per second, but my outdated 2010 hardware struggled with some of the open areas, oftentimes plummeting to 30 frames per second on average, so older rigs may need to err to caution. The options menu is serviceable, offering a fair range of graphic options to alter for performance compensation. Grimrock 2 is only playable with keyboard and mouse controls, so you won't be enjoying this game on the couch, but all the controls make sense and are easy to control anyways. Stability also seems to be peculiar with some recording software. OBS had a hard time hooking onto this and oftentimes wouldn't display any video through game capture, and DX Story would randomly crash the game outright when you would start a recording. The game has some optimization issues, but a modern rig should have no trouble running this game. I'm genuinely surprised at how good a sequel Grimrock 2 turned out to be. I found the original Grimrock to be entertaining despite its many flaws, but Grimrock 2 blew the first game in many RPGs released this year out of the water. The shocking part is that out of the 30 hours of my first playthrough, I still missed a fair bit of content and even the true ending. However, I will say that Grimrock 2 is still an old school RPG at heart, and very much caters to a specific type of clientele. If you are a huge fan of the old school style of RPGs or even remotely enjoy RPGs, do yourself a favor and get Grimrock 2. It's by far the best modern incarnation of the classic RPG on the market. If you're a passing consumer, however, or just a casual player of RPGs, I would be a bit more careful and maybe try out the first game on sale to see if you like it before even considering Grimrock 2. The game expects a lot out of the player, but it gives back so much more in the long run.